Calling all detectives. A fog-bound ship carrying a cargo of gold. A gang of river pirates. And a cup of coffee. These are the exhibits on this page from my casebook. The casebook of Jerry Browning, private detective. A private detective like me, Jerry Browning, learns after a while that anything can happen. By day, the riverfront is a scene of bustling practical activity. But at 2 a.m. of a foggy night, it's a dark, mysterious world. I just watched the freighter Julia Lane put out after guarding it half the night. The ship's owners had received a tip that a waterfront gang might try to raid it for a shipment of gold bars it was carrying to South America. But like so many other tips, this one had been false. Hot dogs, mister! Sandwiches! Donuts! Coffee! I looked up at the wagon and the old man perched atop it. Sure, I'll have a ham sandwich. The old man jumped down from his perch drop the tailboard of the wagon to reveal a traveling lunch counter. Coffee? No, thanks. Just the sandwich. The old man gave me the sandwich, inspected me with bright, shrewd eyes, then... It's cool night. Here, have some coffee anyway. Hand in the house. I laughed, accepted the coffee, and drank it. That's the last thing I remembered. Until I opened my eyes and found myself lying on the deck of a moving ship. I accepted a cup of coffee from a waterfront lunchman and found myself drugged and dumped on the deck of a moving vessel. I shook my head, staggered to my feet. Over the water, the fog was so heavy that it was impossible to see more than a few feet beyond the ship's rail. Johnson, is that you? A heavy hand gripped my shoulder. About time you came out of it. The next time you come on the gray Celia drunk, I'll heave you over the side. Now get far. <coughs> cut me with his free hand and gave me a shove that sent me reeling along the deck. I studied myself against something and found I was leaning against a canvas-covered cannon. From the other side of the gun, a voice muttered, What's down here? I got down on the deck, crawled around to the other side of the gun where a man in seaman's clothes was squatting. He peered into my face. You the new hand, Eddie Johnson? There was no spot for explanation. I mumbled, Yeah, I uh, guess I had one drink too many. The man grinned. I'm Jet. You'll sober up first, fill up when the shooting starts. Shooting? <laughs> you really got a load on. <laughs> you better keep on a Frank's way till you straighten out. A bulky figure loomed over us. Johnson, you there? I scrambled to my feet. Yes, sir. Call me Frank. How are you feeling now? I was feeling terrible, but I said, I'm okay, Frank. Frank nodded. This is your gun. Jet will help you. Better check it now. We'll be overhauling the Julia Lane in half an hour. The Julia Lane? That was the name of the freighter carrying the gold shipment to South America. The ship that was supposed to be raided at the dock. Jed sucked at my sleeve. Hey, hurry up with that gun, Jensen. I nodded, removed the canvas from the cannon, inspected the weapon. It was an anti-aircraft gun that had been depressed for level fire. You can work it, can't you? Sure I can. Get them shells. While Jed was gone, I rapidly checked the gun. It was a little different from the ones I'd fired at Jap planes in the Pacific, but not too much so. There was a bucket seat for the gunner and a wheel to swivel the gun completely around while following a target. I gave the wheel a tentative spin. Worked fine. Well, I didn't know how I'd got on a river pilot boat or who I was supposed to be, but I had a pretty good idea of what I intended to do. Hey, where do you want the shelf, Johnson? Up here, pile them in the rack. This gun's an automatic. You fire a shell, the next one drops into place. A sullen dawn was breaking in the east when Frank came striding back to us. Already? From my seat, I called. Already? Frank nodded. Hang on. We're opening her up wide. fog began to lift, I could see the figures of about a dozen men sitting or lying on the deck. There's the junior ring. I'm going to hail her. Jensen, be ready to fire. 
Now the fog had completely lifted, revealing that we were well out of the river and in open water. If you try to send any radio message, it'll sink you. Jump it. Fire a shot across the bow. I spun the gun around so that its muzzle pointed straight at our own wheelhouse. A moment later, a shot carried away the top of our wheelhouse and the radio man. I shouted, I've got a dozen more shells here. I'll fire at the first person who moves. Cut the motor. Twenty minutes later, a boarding party from the Julia Lane was in control of the river pirate. And two hours later, a Coast Guard cutter, summoned by radio, took the vessel in tow. The next night, I was on the waterfront again, because I had some unfinished business to take care of. Cut dogs, sandwiches, donuts, coffee... Come down off the wagon. The old man jumped down. No, oh, it's you, Gene. Yeah. Are you surprised? The old man shook his head. Nope. Knew who you was right along. We good you could take him. I stared at him. Who are you? Jensen's your name. Everybody on the river knows Pub Jensen. Not so many folks know my boy, Eddie. I was beginning to get it. Your son was supposed to be on that pirate boat? Johnson smiled apologetically. He had the ID, but he don't have no more. Young fellows like that, fresh out of service, could meet up with bad company. The old man's eyes were pleading. You won't do nothing about it, Mr. Browning. I fixed it for you to save that ship. And my boy, he, he re-enlisted this morning. I smiled. Okay, Pop. I won't do anything about it. But the next time you get any leads on detective work, tell me about it first, not afterwards. And that's how I met Pop Johnson, the man whose friendship once helped me to stop a revolution 3,000 miles away. But uh, that's another story. Like I said, anything can happen in the detective business. About all you can be sure of is that when it does happen... It won't be pleasant. Listen next time to Calling All Detectives. Mystery drama, mystery quiz, and a chance for you to match wits with yours truly, Jerry Browning, Private Detective.